Welcome to Buddy Reviews. My name is Lisa. Today I will be doing a book review on Percy Jackson, The Lightning Thief, The Lightning Thief, my bad, by Rick Rorden with my beautiful daughter. Hi, I'm Deshana. She's a little nervous, you guys, so she'll be okay though. Anyway, <laughs> stop hitting me. <laughs> anyway, my other daughter is in the room and she also wanted to say hi to everyone. Come here, Kayana. Say hi. Hi. Okay, now go. No, bye. Shoot. <laughs> All right, when I got to this book, great. first of all, she got this book first than I did, and she read it twice already before I even got to read it. I thought I knew what I was going to get into when I started reading this book, and it was nothing of what I expected. The movie and this book are completely different. All they did was use the names. They, first of all, Percy doesn't live with his mom. He lives in a school. What was the name of the school? EMC Academy. Yes, and he goes to his mom's house for summer vacation, but he's been kicked out of, what, six schools already? In because six years. Yes, in six years, because he is really bad, apparently, so from the what the book and the teachers and everybody is saying. He has a bully named... Nancy Boba Fett. She is extremely mean to him. Nobody does anything to her. And Mrs. Dodds. She is older than what she is in the book, than she is in the movies. And she actually shows up more in the book than in the movie. In the movie, you only hear about her once, but she is actually throughout the whole book. They hardly talk about how you're not supposed to say names and how names have powers. And it's disrespectful to the gods to say their names or something like that, right? Names have power. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Rover. The description in the book... He is different than what he is in the movie. They say he had brown curly hair, uh, but they really don't say exactly what he is, his race. In the movie, he is black, but I love the Grover in the movie, don't get me wrong. But this Grover was a little bit different. Um, not what you are expecting from the Grover in the movie is what I'm trying to say. There's an age difference in the movie, in the book. In the book... Percy, Annabeth, and Grover, they're all 12, except Grover, he's 28. And in the mm -hmm. movie, they're people that are 16 or 17 play Annabeth and Grover and Percy. They're all a lot younger. Like Harry Potter, they started them off at 12. Here, they started them off at 16, 17. That's a big age difference, which they messed up on. Percy goes to his mom's house for summer, for the summer vacation. They take a trip to Montauk. The lake house, right? Montauk. No, what, where were they staying? Montauk. The house that a... Yeah, their cabin at Montauk. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. The cabin. I'm not talking about Montauk. They I'm take a trip the to the cabin. That's where what Grover ended up there. And that's how everything started, basically. And they ended up... The, the, that big dude, uh, Minotaur, there we go, the Minotaur came out of nowhere, and that's when they all got in the car, and made their way to camp, the camp, and he didn't know anything about it, of course, like in the movie, but everything went differently in the, in the book than it did in the movie. Yeah, they never even went to Montauk in the movie, they, I don't think that they said anything about Montauk in the movie. They didn't, they didn't even take a trip, they just stayed at home and then that's when uh, Grover came and got them but uh, what's the steps as name um, Gabe. Gabe they did a perfect Gabe in the movie though from in the book I think that they did perfect I think Sally Jackson from the movie did a really good job playing Sally Jackson in the book she is sweet she is everything they did say she was the movie Kyron has a brown horse body and in the book he has a white horse body so that's the difference between him and when he got to Camp Half-Blood when Percy got to Camp Half-Blood he was dragging Grover with him so yeah. Grover was unconscious he had to save Grover yeah who was moaning about food <laughs> he always moans about food when he sleep <laughs> and so when he got there he collapsed right along with Grover when he wakes up, Annabeth is feeding him 
this food. How did you describe it? Popcorn flavored pudding. Was pop yeah, that. And it was really what they mentioned in the movie, uh, the second movie. Called. Nectar and Ambrosia. Yes, that. Which they don't ever mention in book in the movie, the first in the first movie. My bad. Annabeth, the way they described her in the book, I couldn't. I, I didn't see this Annabeth when they described her in the book. She actually has curls in her hair, and her hair is blonde. Which I saw that they tried to fix in, in movie two, but they really did, didn't do too much of a good job with it. She is taking care of Percy because she's saying he she thinks he's the one. Which I got confused because they didn't have this little connection in the movie. The one is the person she's been waiting for to take her on a quest. Once um, she wanted to go on a quest. So Kyra told her that her time was going to come and she was going to go on a quest. She had to wait for the right person. So she thinks that every newcomer that goes to the camp is it's the, the one. one. So... She's right about Percy because he is the one that she was expecting. But in the movie, she doesn't really like Percy until after they go on the quest. And in this, you know, she was actually showing him around the camp after Mr. Um, Bruno's, whatever his name Bruner. is. Bruno. Bruner. Bruner, whatever, is showing him around. So he has to go somewhere. So she takes over. And that's when they, you know, start talking and she's telling her him a little bit more about herself. And that's when they end up bumping into Clarice, the one that was not in the movie. Also, in the movie, Luke doesn't have a scar under his eye yeah, like he's right supposed to. And Clarice, there was no mention of her in the movie. They didn't even see her. Is she in the movie? Even if they would have had her, they would have had the same girl that played in the movie to be her. Clarice she didn't is, look anything like she's her. fat and ugly. Not that pretty skinny girl that they had in the movie too. She's fat and ugly and evil. Like just pure evil. She is so mean. She has a little, what, two other so-called sisters of hers that are always with her. and they're, Then she, be, she becomes the what? The Nancy, the bully in yeah. the camp towards Percy. Yeah, and she didn't drag him away into the ba girl's bathroom like she was supposed to. And, and they just changed a whole bunch about the book. Oh, yeah. They didn't even know who Percy's um, father was when he first came to Camp Half-Blood in the book. I was like, what? His mom kept it a secret. His father didn't want anybody to know because of uh, the big three. The sire that he swore never to have another child because they were too powerful. Mm -hmm. None of them were supposed to have kids. So Talia wasn't even supposed to be born either. But she was and Percy was. In the movie, they're, in, they're on opposite teams for Capture the Flag. Not on the same team. They're both on the blue team. But in the movie, Annabeth is on the red team. So With Percy. With, with Percy. In the book, she's on the blue team. They have a banner for... Athena and Ares and they actually run out and take it too and take it up to the pavilion and in the book in the movie they don't do that so after that there's a hellhound and it attacks Percy but Annabeth jumps in the way and tries to help him but it leaps over Annabeth and tries to hurt Percy, Percy. and Mr. Bruner or Chiron shot it with an arrow so it sank down and died and after that a sign appeared over his head i don't think the that trident. there was a sign the trident the trident appeared i didn't think that appeared over his head in the movie no it didn't when they came to the quest in the movie they snuck out of the camp uh to go save his mom and they went on uh on a search for three pearls and in the book it's completely different they actually sent them on a quest to go uh to the underworld to get the lightning bolt from Hades because, you know, at this point they're thinking that Hades is the one that took it if Percy wasn't the one that took it. They're going out after Hades to try and persuade him to give him the boat so he can take it to Olympus, to mm -hmm. Zeus. And so when they get there, their first stop, they were on a bus. bus. Three ladies got on, the Kindly Ones or the Furies. The Furies. Yeah, this is where all the craziness on. starts really happening. Miss Dawes comes back. Well, they're on the bus. They 
they go into a tunnel and they they all stand up like I have to use the bathroom and start walking towards the back of the bus. So Annabeth gives Percy his in her invisibility cap, which is never mentioned in the movie or never seen, and tells him to put it on. Percy puts it on and goes up and tries to cause a distraction. He after that the bus blows up and they don't know whether the fairy is dead or not. So they keep on going into the woods. And the middle is where they end up at the restaurant. They're at the restaurant and they meet a biker who turns out to be Aries, who's not mentioned in the movie. They don't see him. They don't even go to the restaurant. So Aries ends up sending Percy on this quest to get his shield. And that doesn't happen in the movie either. He goes to a water park called Waterland. And he and Annabeth end up getting stuck in the tunnel of love. And... It's a prank because Hephaestus wanted to catch Ares and Aphrodite together. So, it was... Annabeth is a It was a trap. It was a trap. That's what it was. And, spy, and he sets robot spiders out to attack them. And they were live on Olympus. So, everyone saw them. All the gods. And after they finally got out, they crashed, landed. But Grover actually helped their way to Las Vegas you know the whole Lotus casino scene in the movie and it was completely different from in the movie they actually got a hotel room and they got to shower change and they were there a few days then they actually got out the trance there was no fight scene in it like it was in the movie uh, they just left when they realized that they were you know there for some days and not just a few hours they made their way to entrance to Hades but on the way to Hades, they met this mermaid who he met in Colorado, or Denver, I mean, yeah, Denver, and he went inside the water, the ocean, which he can breathe under and feel how deep so it is. So he went all like the way that. down, he went all the way down. And the mermaid actually gave him the pearls. There wasn't a quest for the pearls or anything. When he came back up, they got, they went to Hades. They went into this, like, office-type building, and... They were speaking to this, uh, the guy in charge of the underworld or who he's going to send next to the underworld. And the elevator was getting full when Percy, Annabeth, and Grover got there. He thought they were dead, but then he realized they were alive, so they weren't allowed to go in there. So Percy gave them some money, convinced him that he was going to talk to Hades to pay him, to give him a pay raise. So he decided to let them get in the elevator with them and go to the underworld. That's how they got to the underworld. The underworld is completely different. They don't actually show everything in the movie, and they just the way they described it, it was like scary and, and weird and just awful. This is where we actually find out that Kronos is the one in charge of all this. He enters your dreams, and he's making people do what he wants them to do. Yeah, he sacrifices his mom and takes Grover with him with the pearls, and the lightning bolt is actually in the book bag that Ares gave them. So once they, you know, they, Hades actually thinks that he took it because it's in his bag. So they decide, you know, we got to go. It's time to go. They, you know, did the pearl thing and they went back up into the world. From there, he has this big fight scene with Ares that they don't have in the movie. It was actually, he actually fought Ares and not Luke. Goes to Olympus, returns. Oh, you know, he gets uh, Hades' um... Helm of Darkness, which yes, is what Yes, because they were that was stolen for. too. Not just the lightning bolt. That was stolen too. So he took that from Ares also. He gave it to the Fury to give back to Hades. And then he went up to Olympus without Annabeth. He returned the lightning bolt. The bolt. Bolt. <laughs> to Zeus. But Zeus, he. They did a good job with Zeus in the movie, I think. But Poseidon, I don't think they did a very no, good. No, Poseidon job. was completely different from the movie and the book. Yeah. So from there he goes back home to his mom where they told him he was going to have a box and that was going to be his choice, you know, that was going to be in the box. And the box was actually um, Medusa's, Medusa's head. head. So he leaves that head there in the box with his mom, goes back to Camp Half-Blood, and uh, Luke takes him, you know, away from everyone and they have a conversation. That's when he realizes that Luke is the one that stole the lightning um, bolt and everything else and he's the one that actually started everything with Kronos but this is where he chooses to go back home his mom um, used Medusa's head to turn gave him to a statue and sold it <laughs> she sure did <laughs> this book was just 
awesome it was so much action in it i freaking loved it i know she loved it because she read it twice I thought the book was very good. It was very different from the movie, though. The movie, they changed it a lot. It's like, I don't think the producers or the directors or anyone read the book. If they I mean, did, the, they yeah. would have made it very it was, better. It was written for them, so I don't know how they messed that up. It was written for them. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us today on this book review and my beautiful daughter. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.